Well, so far we've talked about how all the components in the car affect the static bias setup on the car, all the influences that they've had. We've talked about how the balance bar in the pedal can be used to separate load between master cylinders. We've talked about when you're using same size master cylinders on the car, how they'll produce even pressure if the balance bar is centered. We've talked about if you split the balance bar one way or the other, how it'll affect pressure. We've talked about splitting master cylinder size to influence the pressure. Then we send that pressure downstream and we multiply that pressure times the piston area that's in each caliper. Now, we know that on this car we have a setup to where we started out with a static setup with the balance bar centered. We have two 7 eighths master cylinders. We have calipers on the front that have a combination inch and 7 eighths, inch and 3 quarter pistons in the front with an inch and 3 eighths piston caliper in the rear. By running through those calculations, this car had about somewhere around 65% front brake static bias setup. Now, Dalton, from what I understand, this car is fresh out of the trailer just the way it was when it came off the track at the end of the last race. Now, were you able to run this car at this track with that even bias setup, the way that we sent it out of the shop with? Actually, the track we ran at was a tight quarter mile track and we had uh, quite a bit of gear in it, so it was, the motor was real wound up, which gave me more of a rear brake feeling, feeling like it had more rear brake, so I ended up putting some more front brake in it. And part way through the race, I actually put some more front brake in it after fuel burn off and tire wear. So that's how it came out. So during the course of the evening, you actually made two adjustments putting more front brake in the car from that even pressure setup that we started out with our baseline setup. Yes, I did. Okay, well let's use our gauges and take a look and see just how much adjustment you've made. Roger, you mind stepping to the okay. back and seeing what's going on on that rear gauge while we look at the front? I'll get that. We've installed a set of gauges that mount directly into the caliper bleed fitting so that we can record just how much pressure there is at the caliper as Dalton squeezes down on the brake pedal. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have Dalton squeeze down on the brake pedal until we have 400 pound of pressure at the front caliper. Now that 400 pound pressure number is a number that you'll see fairly often commonly on the racetrack, but we always use that as a constant in our checking uh, and then measure the changes that occur to the rear. So Dalton, if you will, Go ahead and squeeze down on that pedal. When we get to 400 pounds, I'm going to have you stop. Okay, hold it right there. Roger, what do you have on the rear? We're at 300 back here. Okay, now that we've recorded the fact that Dalton made enough adjustments to the balance bar that we're going to see 400 pound of pressure from the front and 300 pound of pressure from the rear, we're going to be able to calculate what differences have occurred from that even pressure setting that when he left the car. We'll take that 400 pound of front pressure, we'll record that in our logbook with our 300 pound of rear pressure. That way, next time we go back to this track, we'll know just where to start to make sure that we're fast right out of the trailer. Here are the formulas to use to adjust your static bias. First, use the formula from earlier in the show to determine the square inches of your caliper pistons. That formula was bore times bore times .785 equals square inches. Do this for only one side of the caliper. Multi-piston calipers add the square inches of the pistons on one side. Now multiply the piston area times the inlet pressure on the front calipers. This is your front clamping force. The formula for calculating the bias is front bias equals front clamping force divided by the sum of the front clamping force and rear clamping force together. You can now plug in different size caliper pistons or master cylinder pistons into the formula to determine the correct size to get the desired static balance. Well, Carl, it's been great having you on here. We gotta run now, but I hope you'll come back sometime. Thank you, Roger. It's been great to be here. Appreciate it.